Hello and welcome to today's podcast brought to you by Little Iguana, where our mission is to empower children to lead a safe, happy, and healthy life. And I'm your host today, Stacey Chalemi, and I'm so excited to have Jimmy T, the founder of Little Iguanas, joining me today to discuss the importance of teaching children safety skills and how parents can ensure the well-being of their children. So I'm very excited to have you on the show. And just as you know that Jimmy also has his own podcast, he's part of our podcast team. He has numerous podcasts that he's recorded with us to teach children and to teach parents different safety skills on how they can protect themselves, protect their children, and protect the future lives of our next generation. So I'm so excited to have you on the show today. And tell us a little about, you know, I know you have a specific idea of what you you want to teach children today. Tell us a little about what the, your major goals are and what message you'd like to get across to us today. Well, thank you for having me again. And thanks for the audience to listen to us. Um, today, you know, we wanted to focus basically on the car safety, the bus safety, um, why you're inside of a vehicle, and then also when you're outside the vehicle. So we just want to give those little reminders though we tell our children all the time you know we want to just explain why we need to show them all the time yes you know i think you know nowadays you know we when we grew up um there were no seat belts and you know, <laughs> and uh you know Very it's true. So, yeah and it's so <laughs> important you know people didn't realize back then the importance of of having a seat belt and I even remember, you know, my son who was in a car accident, not to uh, probably, I would say, you know, several years back, he uh, he was in a car accident. And if he didn't have his seatbelt on, he, he, he probably would have died. And um, the crazy thing was, is that when the airbag went off, when he got out of the car, the he had a cross on and the cross was embedded in his chest and he he swore it was a sign from god you know telling him that you know it was it, you know because of this seatbelt because of you know he was watching over him but yet you know that seatbelt saved his life and you know um it's so important for people to realize how how important it is you know for their children to wear a seatbelt and there have been many cases where parents don't put the seatbelts on the kids which is crazy and you know the kids can you know the kid there's many times where kids get into trauma all you need is one hard hit on the head and you can have so many different illnesses people get dementia from hard hits on the head people can come down with epilepsy people can have permanent brain damage just from one hard hit on a head so with that said, you know, tell us a little about what you like to teach at your foundation and how it impacts the people in your lives. Well, you know, I'd love to, it, it's funny you say, it, not funny, haha, -ha funny, but uh, ironically, you know, you're talking about a seatbelt that saved a life and I'll, I'll t share with the audience and you a story that happened with us a little bit in the show. But uh, right now, you know, our focus has always been about prevention and the proactive with little iguana and deliver it through music you know we want to yeah. empower the kids so that they they will do it when they're not in our guidance right because right. we see them all the time and we can tell them but what we're hoping our goal is is so that when they're not with us that they do the same things that we're trying to teach them so you know so many causes of accidents are because of uh you know distracting of the driver you know the the throwing things around, acting up in the back seat, you know, yelling and screaming or or fighting and, you know, and and parents turning around to, you know, reprimand the children or to tell them to knock it off and their eyes aren't on the road focused in front of them. And I mean, when you're traveling 50 miles an hour, it's 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 a second that you've traveled, you know, <laughs> you've traveled a hundred feet and all of a yeah. sudden, you know, you, you've hit something that, that you weren't expecting a car that stops short, someone running across the street, a biker animal, you know, you swerve. So distracting of the driver, we try to focus on explaining to the children, not, not telling them don't do it and that's it and leave it that way. We, we tell them we shouldn't do it and this is the reasons why. So in the show, it's discussed in a in a non-threatening, non-scary, I guess you would call it, environment. Yeah. And the children absorb 
all the music and the lessons as we're teaching them. And they remember that. And that's really the key to a lot of things. Right. Um, that prevention, you know, share with them the information, but share with them the consequences as well. You don't have to scare them, but share with them the consequences. Right. So, you know, so what are some of the things that could happen to children? I know you probably heard a lot of things in, in your lifetime of people who didn't wear seatbelts versus wearing seatbelts. So I, know, I think sometimes people, um, you know, don't realize the importance of wearing a seatbelt and how it could save a life. And, you know, how do you get that message across to children and to parents, the importance of wearing that seatbelt? Well, that that's actually a great question because it, it goes into, I've learned that when we teach our children the lessons, they kind of bring it up to the parents mm -hmm. when the parents aren't doing what we have instructed to the children. Give you an example. We we talk about buckling up. Right. Now, we all talked about buckling. We all, you know, there's so many commercials that we didn't create buckling up. We just created a way, like I've told people in the past, to give the children the tools they need to do what they have to do to survive, but do it in a kid friendly way where they can absorb it. So yes. buckling up, right? Before yes. you, before you go anywhere in a car, we teach it before that car starts rolling, you know, you, you've gone too quick. If you didn't hear the click, well, that's <laughs> kind of a silly little rhyme, but what's the click? Well, the click is the buckle in the seat when it, when it goes buckle into the seatbelt, you know, it, it makes that clicking sound. So we try to make it so it's the children are wanting to hear the clicking sound, you know, they yeah. can't wait to hear that click. I've gone too quick if I didn't hear a click. Mm -hmm. And when they're singing the songs about buckle up, buckle up your seatbelt, again, it reminds them what they do when they get in the car before that car starts driving anywhere, or moving yeah. anywhere. You know, we, we, have to get our seatbelts and then you bring it back to not to mess around to distract the driver and you do want to repeat these lessons and not just tell them one time and think that they got it forever i mean how many times did we teach our children abcs or colors or shapes or how to read a million times yeah you know how to eat how, how to go to the bathroom correctly all of those things you know you have to continually remind them and don't yell and scream because that shuts down, that puts up barriers amongst kids so many times. So buckle up. You've gone too quick if you didn't hear a click. Mm -hmm. And you had told us a story about your son. Well, here's a story that really is kind of the ironicness of the world, I always say. We, we did shows in a school where some children performed with us and they did the buckle up. So they went home and their mom didn't t buckle up she was from the old school like us i mean yeah. we, we we were in that world where your dad or your mom got either well my days it was the dad that bought the car and he had a choice am radio or seat belts mm -hmm. and they chose am radio because we had six kids and he didn't mm -hmm. want to hear us so <laughs> you, you had you know you can hear I miss in the morning, you know, with the plastic Jesus on the dashboard of the car song. But but goodness sakes, stop short and you get thrown out the car window, you know, but you yeah. can't hear it. So we have the seatbelt. So the kids went home and said, Mommy, you have to put your seatbelt on. We can't drive the car until the seatbelts are on. Right. Well, she made it a point to call the office and to explain to us in, in colorful words about how we told the children and brainwashed them. So it's yada, yada, yada kind of thing about telling kids that they have to put their seatbelt on and everybody has to have the seatbelt on in the car. So she puts her seatbelt on because she just did it repetitiously after a while because with her kids in it or without her kids in the car, she would started putting on her seatbelt. She got in a right. bad car accident where she had flipped her car. And the state police officer said that if you didn't have your seatbelt on, you would have died or had been extremely seriously injured. Right. And she had called the office crying and apologizing to the staff about how all she could think about was not having her chil her children, not having their mom. Right. And it overwhelmed her and it made her feel like she had to call us 
because that was a life-changing moment, I guess, for her. Yeah. So using music to teach Buckle Up, not only did we keep the children safe, but we also helped the mom on that situation, which is, which is again, pretty, pretty funny, you know, when, yeah. you know, now, now we say we, we save kids instead of two to 10, we save kids two to, well, she probably would lie about her age anyways, right? <laughs> we all do, you know, when we get older. So two to 39, let's say, or mm -hmm. two, two. <laughs> <laughs> but it was funny that, you know, it, it shows that, through the trickle down or trickle up effect, everyone around, you know, learns it when the children learn it, right? Oh yeah. Kids, kid, kids will be in stores and they'll have their phones in front of them, screens, and parents will hand them their phone. Can you figure this out for me? And yep. they learn that together. So why couldn't they learn something as simple as things that save their lives together? Yeah. You know, I, I think one of the biggest problems too is our, our cell phones. How many times I've heard stories of either the mom being on, on the cell and not paying attention. And you sometimes you have the kids not paying attention and they're so worried about going on their cell or going on their iPad that they forget to buckle up. And I think it's so important too that parents pay attention more and then also check before they before they start to drive to make sure all the kids have yeah, their seatbelts on because there's many times where I, I've seen where parents don't even have their seatbelts on because they're so distracted of who's texting them and and you know trying to pay attention to the road and trying to pay attention to their cell, cell at the same time and that's how we get into accidents one of the biggest cause of accidents is because people are paying attention to their cell and they're not paying attention to the road and if you have children in the car then you know you have a big responsibility to make sure before you put your foot on the gas and before you drive away to make sure those kids have seatbelts on. What are your thoughts about that? Well, it's absolutely the truth with cell phones. I mean, and anything these days I see, you know, I mean, cell phones, 100%, no hand, no, no doubt about it. You know, um, it is the best, worst cause of accidents currently because people don't realize again, how fast they're traveling and how fast they'll get from here to that tree yeah. if they're not watching it and right. they don't they don't get it you know they I only took my eyes off the road for a second well second again going at 60 miles an hour you know you smash into the car right next to you and that caused 13 cars to smash up you know because they're looking down on on what an instagram post from somebody's friend or you know or uh, or a, or a monkey drinking a milkshake or whatever yeah. silliness we share with each other. I mean, you know, put it on do not disturb if that's going to help you. I mean, I urge all everybody that that drives, hit your phone, put it on do not disturb when you walk into your car, sit down. And then when you're done, you know, then 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 focus on it. Or if you're in a parking lot, turn it back on. But there's no reason why you're traveling at a high rate of speed to be, you know, sending emails back and forth to people. It can wait. It exactly. can wait. You know, and I love how you teach through music. I love how, you know, you're able to really, um, you know, embed it into children's minds because you're not just telling children or suggestion to children or writing a picture on a, on a, on a whiteboard. You know, you're actually using music. And music, when when you sing the words, something happens. It just changes. It, it it embeds into your brain. When you sing it over and over and over again, it becomes repetitious, and you know those words. And then you know you start to follow it because you're seeing your cat those characters that they admire and they mentor, and they're following what those characters are doing because they believe in those characters. So I, I think that's a great idea that you use music and you have different characters like little iguana you know, sh telling them this is the right way to be, you know, and and it, they become the mentors and they, you know, they they follow that. And, and it seems like, you know, that it actually can help parents as well, because I think sometimes parents, you know, we don't know everything and we tend to make mistakes along the way. That's how we learn. But when you have little songs like this and then you see the impact it's having on your child, you know, you can you could learn from it and you could also share those songs with other people. So 
I think it's a great yes. idea. I think it's a great idea. Have you seen a big change when, you know, uh, when it comes to speaking to somebody and telling somebody what they should do whether or how they can stay safe versus when you put it into music and you sing and you have children actually, you know, be uh, kind of inter intertwine into one big activity and they're doing it together as one big group. And is there a big difference in, in, in the way they start to react and the way they start to look at life when it comes to safety? Yeah, I mean, putting it through music, Stacy, makes it non-scary, you mm -hmm. know, or non-authoritarian where, you know, I'm up here and I'm preaching to you and speaking mm -hmm. words to you. Right. Things that, you know, most of us don't want to be talked to, like, because we know it. You yeah. Know? And, and it's not so much parents, you know, don't know this stuff. They just forgot or they haven't, they they have thought to become invincible in life where, you know, the simplest things can take your life or hurt you. Yeah. And we've stopped, we've stopped all that, you know, making sure we buckle. What, what did your parents, you know, um, but as a parent, or I would say as a parent, you know, I would make sure, make sure you buckle up, you know, we're not going anywhere until you buckle up type of thing, you know, and, and nowadays it's, it, it's like you say, parents don't do it. They, they know it, but they don't do it. Yeah. And, you know, they, they know not to put their hand on a hot stove, but sometimes we do it. And, mm -hmm. you know, what we try to do is make it a way of life for kids and with music. I mean, if you, if I'm singing something to somebody, they can learn a lesson very easily. And it could be one of the scariest lessons in the world, but they can right. learn it because it's done through music. And it so it doesn't frighten you as much. Exactly. And so that's why music is so important to deliver messages and education, anything, anything you want to teach a kid, you know, put it to music and they'll remember it. And I urge everybody to do that. Right. You know, it's like, like um, we were talking about it, I think, in, an, in another episode. It's like, you know, I, my kids, you know, I used to play the radio and I used to play all the oldie songs and I played over and over and over again. And my kids are probably the only kids that knew all the songs from the 70s, 80s and 90s. And to this day, they still remember all the words to those those songs. And it was because it was repetitious and I kept playing it over and over again. And the kids would be in the car and they're singing the songs with me when they were little and then they were toddlers. And, you know, but those things stick in your head. And what I'm trying to say is, I, you know, when you have these little songs as kids, the, the principles, the morals, the, the, the goal that you're trying to teach, you know, like for this, buckle up and stay safe, it sticks in their head, you know, whether or not it's not going away. They'll remember those songs, you know, or if they don't remember the whole entire song, they'll remember bits and pieces, you know, and but the main purpose of the song will stick in their head and you know, and then they'll have a way to, of teaching others. So I, I think it's great because it's it's not only you're learning something, you're also learn how to be a mentor and teach others. You know, it's a it's a great way to like kind of pass, you know, different principles, like keeping safe, different ways of keeping safe. It's, it's like a snowball effect. Once you learn the song, once you apply it and then, you know, it, it sticks in your head and then you kind of can teach someone else. You see someone else not buckling up. Well, you know, they could repeat the words of the song and say, hey, you know, you're supposed to buckle up because little iguana says da, 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 you know. So I think that's sure. a great idea. Yeah, you learn from your peers. I mean, most of our children learn what our, our their peers do. I mean, they learn from they hear things. They so so why is it silly? I mean, I know a lot of people that oh, that's silly or that's you know baby. It's not baby to be safe. What what's yeah. what's baby or you know what what what's how could you call somebody being a wussy because they want to keep their life safe? I mean, yeah. that's just silliness, you know. So. Who cares what others say to you? You you know, when, when the car rolls over, then you'll be the one that's alive. And yeah, and yeah, those kids were cool, but they're not with us any longer. And yeah. you are. So what would you rather have? A cool kid that's dead or a live kid that followed the rules and all they did was look out to protect themselves? And and like you say, I mean, if there's three kids in the car and two of them put on their seatbelt probably will get the third one to do the same thing just because everybody around them is doing it. So. Right.
And definitely music is the way, you know, whether you're inside a car or outside the car, you know, like we were talking about, right? you know, just being smart and safe outside the car as well, because, you know, you, you have to be, you have to be defensive these days, right? Yes. Whether you're driving the car, you have to be defensive. You have to, you can't, you can't just be in your own world. You have to see the cars in front of you, yes. cars to the side of you you know, car swerving or somebody out of control or something, you, you need to be defensive. And it's the same way, like we teach our children, you know, I, I hear it so many times and I get so angry with people. Can I say the word angry? I meant I angry, angry with people, right? <laughs> because they'll say things to me like, I got the right away. I'm in the car crosswalk. I understand that. Mm -hmm. And probably every single person understands that. But the guy or girl or whomever's driving the car may not, may be on their phone, okay, right? right? Maybe looking at the pigeon to the left or the funny snow or icicle or the car over here or the person right. walking, right? And they're not looking at the person in the crosswalk. Right. So yeah, you had the right of way. I agree with you. And you're going to just keep walking and then get run over by a car? Or would you rather just stop for a second mm -hmm. until you know it's acknowledged that they're stopping and then cross you know right. i mean would you rather be hurt and right or safe and healthy i mean exactly. seriously it's 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 that so you need to be safe outside you know you need to teach your children hey you know what before we even step out onto the street mm -hmm. you know before we even go that way right let's look to the left and right and left again, like we've talked about in the past. Just take that, pay, what, what's it going to take you? One, two, three seconds of your life. Right, right. Exactly. One second, two seconds, three seconds. And now you know that you're safe. So three seconds of your life is better than just walking across because you're right. Yeah. You know, and then when you teach that, I mean, parents don't realize when they do that and say that, that gets embedded into the children. Yeah. And they think that they're, you know, that they have the right of way. Yes, you, you do. But, but that's not the point. The point is, yes, you know, mm -hmm. you need to just be safe. So teaching them through music, you know, stop and then look out, you know, to make yeah. sure that you make it simple for them. You know, exactly. we know the causes. Little Iguana has the cures for many of it just by repetition, but, you know, when they use a little guana, I urge them not to just use it one time and that's it, you know, make it part of their daily life. And it doesn't have to be all the lessons in one time. Yeah. It could be one lesson a week or one lesson a day or whatever it is that you feel, you know, you call it, you know, you call it little iguana time where it's, you know, traveling from the school to home. You, you're there, you play a song, you explain what it is, you know, you both you both are doing something together and right. your kids love it because you're teaching them something in a cool way. And you love it because you know, they're being taught finally that yeah. this has to be done. And it's a great relationship and it's not nerdy and, and it's not weird and it's not common sense. And it's not none of, none of that. It, it, we save lives and we want, we want parents to actually take the time and, and, and help, you know, help yeah. your kids. That's all. It's very important. I can't tell you how many times that I've seen parents just walking with their children and a car is, is driving and they think they have the right of way because they're a pedestrian, but they're walking right in front of a moving car. Now, what yeah. happens if that, you know, if that person can't slam on the brakes quick enough? You know, I will I will see parents and I will see them with their kids. They're not even looking to the left or the right. They just walk right into the street. And they have no clue what's on, on either side. And, Correct. you know, Correct. and they think because they have the right of way, but you never know. Someone could be driving fast. Someone might be in a car where some cars have like fast brakes where you touch the brake, it stops the car right away. And then you have other cars where they have a, a safety precaution on their brakes and it slows down and then it stops. So what happens if you, you take in your child and you're not looking left and you're not looking right. And you just think you have the right of way and you move right in front of a moving vehicle. How many times sure. people have gotten hit? Sure because of that. I mean, people don't realize even crosswalk, 
you know, when the lights go flash and they yeah. say you walk, you still have to look. Yeah. I mean, I have so many people, so many stories of people being hit because why? Because the light flashed green and they stepped off the curb and just started walking across the street. Well, what about the distracted driver? Yeah. You know, they don't have the time to stop. They are too late. You know, um, they don't understand. They had a medical emergency. The right. sun was in their eyes. I mean, um, they sneezed. Right. Right. I mean, they coughed. You know, I mean, it could be any of that. And and all you need is this much room from here to here to hit you and to send you flying. And, you know, using that proactive approach where I'm going to stop show my children what I'm going to do before I do it. Okay. Okay, guys. I mean, how many times seriously have, have a, has a parent stopped at the street corner and say, okay, guys, before we step out onto the road, this is what we're going to do. And this right. is why we do it. I mean, I, I, I've heard a few, I, I will say, and I'm very proud of them. I've heard a few, but I don't hear many of them say that. And that's the teaching moment. Yes. I mean, that's when you have the chance, you know, don't, don't tell them about it right. a week from now, why you're doing it, show them why you're doing it. Exactly. It doesn't take any time because you're still doing it, right? You're still, right. you're still going through the action. So share it with them yes. and then they get it. I think communication is key. I think sometimes, you know, parents just, um, they don't teach their kids, you know, they just, you know, they just do it with their kids. They might yell at their kids when their kids aren't doing the right thing, but they're not showing them the right way. And I think we need to take time out to show our children the right way. And like you said, don't yell at them because it just it just freezes them up or it just it just distances them from from their parent to explain to them and not make them feel like they're stupid or they did something you know bad, but to explain to them what you know the right way is. So for the next time that's done properly, I think. What do you think? I hate 100%. You know, there's no reason that has to be a yelling match or, or an, you know, people get angry. It's definitely a teaching moment for all of us because it gives us the ability to, at that exact moment in time, show those kids what we're doing. Right. Because like you say, telling them, Telling them, oh, yeah, you got to look both ways before you cross the street. Okay. Is that anything like, all right, guys, when you get to the street corner, before you step off into the road, we need to look left and we need to look right. We need to look left because sometimes people aren't paying attention. Right. It's a little bit different than look both ways before you cross the street. Right. And, and at that moment in time when you're doing it, that's the time to teach them. And, and I agree 100% teaching moments. You, you shouldn't be yelling during teaching moments. If you're yelling during teaching moments, then you're not teaching, you're yelling. Right. Okay. And that teaching moment gives you the ability to take a big breath. You know, I always tell parents, even, even, even their kids, but parents too, cool and calm, right? Yep. Just cool and calm. All right. What do I want to say? How do I want to say it? Okay. Let me say it. Yes. This is what it is. Not, oh, you're stupid. Don't you don't, you know, or you dumb. Don't you know better than that? You should know better than that. Well, how should they know better than that? If you, if you haven't shown them how to do it. Right? Exactly. Exactly. You told them a million times, but you never showed them once. Right. And the child is a show me person, just like yes. the rest of us. That's why you can say things to kids, but if you're not doing them, they'll never follow what you're saying. Right. They'll only follow what you're doing. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, so I am, if you had to take like what we've talked about and like wrap it up and, and sum, summarize it, what are some things you'd like to emphasize to make parents, you know, to help parents and listeners when it comes to teaching children how to buckle up, stay safe in the car and outside the car? Well, the first thing is, to take the time just to show them first, whatever, whatever the message is that you're trying to convey to them, right? You know, household safety, water safety, anything you want to just 
take the time to think about how the words you want to say because right. you need to explain it to them. That's that's the first thing. Yeah. Second is to use music if you want the if you want your message to stick. Right. If you want your message to stick, you either need to show them 13,000 times mm -hmm. or sing it to them while you're showing it to them because that triggers the you know the 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 uh reaction method within your brain the recall method music. Right. Okay? And then stay cool and calm with it. I know it's hard. I know it's really hard out there, folks. I mean, I've had kids and I've lost my temper and I felt so bad when I've lost my temper and yelled, um, you know, just take the time to think of what, what it is you're saying to them instead yeah. of saying, you know, don't talk to strangers. How do I explain that to them? You know, go to little iguana. And mm -hmm. if you need help, that's what we're here for. When we're, we're if we were all perfect, you know, we wouldn't need anything, right? We'd right. all be walking on on the water and we'd all be, you know, flying around with wings, but but we're not perfect and it's okay. You know, right. we don't have to be perfect. No. But what we do need to do is try as hard as we can to make our children better, smarter than us mm -hmm. and to be cool and calm about it all the time because it just makes it a better world for us. Why? Why get in a, you know, why get in an angry, go to bed angry? You know, I mean, have you ever been laying in bed and think, thought to yourself, my goodness, you know, I, I, I guess I shouldn't have yelled at my kids for spilling a glass of milk, Yeah. Or, you know, or, or what, dropping something. I right. Mean, Cause we all have. Yes. But to take the time, take the time to try. I mean, our kids are, our kids grow up so fast. Right. Our kids are gone. You know, yesterday I was holding my child in my arms today. You know, they're 36 year old, incredible adults. Yeah. You know? and I miss that. But I also make sure that why I was holding them and coddling and teaching them and nurturing them, I took the time to at least explain to them what I meant by these these messages, these lessons, you know, yeah. so I would love everybody to. You know, go home, give your kid a big hug, sit down, read them a book or talk to them or watch their favorite show together, laugh with them, you know, get the silly jokes. Yeah, I know that I know I know the guy stepped in mud and went made a noise like that, but laugh with them, you know, right. take the time to laugh with them and let them know. Yeah, that is funny, you know, so just just have 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 it with your children and 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 love them every minute of the day. I wish wish we all could do that. Oh, for sure. Now tell everybody some of the services that you offer because you have lots of different services and you have events coming up. Tell us a little about that. Well, as for events, we have a whole bunch of things coming up. We have that worldwide day that we will be announcing in our in our next episode about world kindness day and that's coming on board really fast and it's a lot of fun we have a virtual color run so if you wanted to sign up for a color run and mm -hmm. take part in it no matter where you are in the world you know we'll we'll ship you out the stuff and you take you have fun with us and video it and share it with us and be part of our day and mm -hmm. um service wise we really just we used moms and grandmas and police and educators and we developed the program that's easy to use because that's the first thing it can't be difficult to use because if it is most of us older people won't use it yeah so we made it as i say simple stupid for me where i can use the items and i can choose any of it some kids may be color color you know they may be artists so the coloring part of the world and drawing part of the world of little iguana is great for them right some kids may be games puzzles um word finds you know because we all learn differently some people can't oh i can't draw but some people can spell i can't do this but some people can play you know so we made it for every aspect of our learning levels right but the main theme is music so every lesson has music for them to understand, to be part of, to absorb, to use later on in their lives. 
Yeah. And then products wise, you know, all of those programs are live musicals that we bring into elementary schools. Children love it. Parents, teachers love it. Kids get the messages. They understand them. The success stories have been just unbelievable over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the educational products is something that we use ver to teach kids, whether they're they're books that read to kids so that kids can understand the pronunciation of the words or how they're used in sentences. Because handing a book to someone and telling them a person who can't read, here, read, you know, that first of all, that's very frustrating to the child because oh, they yeah. can't read. Okay. Right. So then it makes them feel inferior, which is not good. Right. Okay. So we give them something where they take the time. They listen to the words and they're, they're reading along, but they're not reading. They're reading with the reader. Right. And then they can read it. Eventually they can read it themselves and they understand it. And it's reinforced. Again, the books are reinforced with music. Why? Because they get the main lessons out of them. Right. So there's a lot of things that we have. and We just don't make items. You know, that's something that we always make some things. So whether it's a sticker, it has a catchy phrase that, children will remember but it drives home the lesson that we taught them you know yeah that's amazing i love it now where can people find your website where can they find you under little iguana usa.org you know l-i-l and then iguana i-g-u-a-n-a usa.org or just type in little l-i-l iguana and we'll pop up. We're the mm -hmm. only ones out there right now. So <laughs> <laughs> big bird was already taken. So we go. <laughs> I, <you know. laughs> He's like big bird. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been amazing. Thank you so much, Jim, for coming on this show today and talking about how to stay safe in the car and outside the car. I think it's really a great lesson for parents to hear and to help teach their children. So thank you so much for taking the time out and, yep. you know, and teaching us all these things. And I look forward to seeing you again. And this has been amazing. Thank you. Well, thank you. Appreciate it very much. Thanks. You have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.